Hi, everybody. It is the Steiger Olson Report, and I'm here with Wayne Steiger. Hi, Wayne. Hello, Steve. And we're part of the new Galactic News Network that Wayne and I have been founding, and I think that it's exciting that we're going to have two properties involved in that right now with the WSO site and the Steiger Olson Report will just be sucked right in underneath that, Wayne. Well, I think it's exciting times, Steve. Listen, we've got a real problem here on planet Earth, Steve. Yeah, um, I know. And that's that's the story right now. And uh, basically, we're going to talk about radiation. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes what you and I report on is not fun stuff. Um, and this no, it's is not fear porn either. It's just be informed stuff. No, no, no. You know, listen, anyone who uses that terminology is suffering from disconnect. But here's the problem, Steve. We have got a serious problem in Fukushima. Fukushima, yeah, there's the plant Where, itself, what it looks like from, uh, you know, from the air. That's what it looks like. And the math has been done, Steve. Since the, I don't know what you want to call it, the disaster at Fukushima, look how much seawater has been poured into the Pacific Ocean. Yes. Look at that. 19 trillion, 272 billion metric tons of seawater. Steve, explain to me what the hell are people thinking here? Well, here's why isn't there a more uh, alarm going by the UN? <clears throat> I'm exact. That's exactly what I was going to say, Wayne. I'm, I'm. I look at this, and I'm. And and actually, I worked with a guy that was working for the Navy. He was the CIO for the U.S. Navy in Japan when the earthquakes happened. He talked about. Um, he talked about that the USS Ronald Reagan was coming to come provide earthquake relief, and even right after the event had happened, it was and it was traveling from west to east. Um, towards Japan, it, the radiation levels got too high and they had to turn back. Whoa. Well, I just thought everyone... I, I, this has been going on since then. Yes. So, as our viewing audience can tell, Steve, Reactor 2 is... All right, we're just going to lay it out here. Reactor 2 is confirmed the China syndrome. It has breached the containment area of the last line of defense. In fact, they don't know, Steve, how far this has gone. We know about Reactor 3. It has been rumored for years that it has already breached, and Reactor 4 is unstable as well. Steve, right. this in is... China, in a China syndrome, just in case you guys don't know, it refers to a movie that was done in the 70s with Jane Fonda. And I mean, you can go watch the movie. It's a great movie. And it would really help you understand what we mean by China syndrome. But really what it means is an uncontainable leak of radiation that could lead to the extinction of everything on Earth. Yes. And the other problem is this area, as we already know, is susceptible to what? Earthquakes and tsunamis, correct? They get, they got, I mean, the earthquakes have not stopped in this region at all, Wayne, because we watch the earthquakes as well. And folks, this is all contaminated water. 400 tons. Now, this is groundwater. This is not the seawater. This is the groundwater. And they have no place to put this, Steve. And it just continues. In fact, as I understand that the last major quake that hit the same region here, when that tsunami came in, it literally carried out, they don't know how much of this debris. So Steve, this is the problem. And as you can see here, they, they really don't know what to do. So the reactor buildings are here. These are tanks. The tanks are apparently are linking. You've got groundwater flowing through here, going out to the sea. And the problem is you've got them, them to keep this area cooled so they don't have an explosion. They put the seawater on it, Steve. Well, again, this goes back to why isn't this, if it's, if, if it's as dire as you and I are, are analyzing it to be, looking at the media reports on it and so forth, why isn't there a huge 
outrage in the earth of all countries coming together to figure out how to stop this this uh, this travesty. Well, here's the problem, and I found this, and my this is what the Japanese government is covering up. And I am calling the Japanese government out to come forward for, if nothing else, on humanity's sake, Steve. Look at this. I know I mean, we have to come against the core belief, which is saving face, but right now is no time to save face. I mean, if there has to be a call out to everybody in the world to come help to do something, you know, we need to do it because it's our, our, all of our lives are at stake. So let me tell you to all of our listeners in the West Coast, California, Mexico, Oregon, Seattle, Canada, Alaska. Folks, what we're about to show you, and it's hit the headlines. We're going to show you the headlines. You are about to get, again, the front line. So, Steve... As we continue to look here, and I thought this was very timely, they actually did Reactor 2 before it breached. And I think that you can see the complexity of this problem. And, and I think, quite frankly, Steve, it has overwhelmed mankind's ability to handle. Yeah, I always, and that was always the fear with, uh, uh, with using um, uh, nuclear energy was that we didn't have the technology to contain it if we did see a China syndrome type situation. So you know, this, this really should be the, the primary you know, challenge that's being faced by the scientific community. Um, and I don't see that happening. I don't, I, I, mean, I don't see anything. You know, there is technology now. Uh, Bill Gates is providing uh, funding for it. I think Elon Musk is behind it, that they have now found a way to do nuclear energy and avoiding just this problem right here. But it continues to get worse, Steve. When we talk about everything is connected, I did a video, as you know, over the weekend called mm -hmm. Extinction Code Blue. Um, what I was trying to show people, the evidence is here, the Pacific Ocean is becoming a dead zone. And right now, I wouldn't advise anyone, to, well, uh, it's really, uh, we don't eat any more fish that comes out of the Pacific. We just don't. Uh, that includes, uh, my, one of my favorites was Alaskan king crab. But look at this. This is what the problem is. And it's all connected, Steve. So talk about a metaphor. Ted, talk about a metaphor for how connected we all are, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's a serious issue, and I don't mean to make light of it, but I mean, if you don't believe, just look at this. If you don't believe that we all are interdependent on each other, and we need to come together as a species to fight the problems that we're facing, you know, as a world, come on, man. Well, you know, I actually read Steve. There are scientific papers that have, I mean, you know, these are PhDs, and when I read this, they actually believe that the ocean has the ability to absorb radioisotopes. What? I mean, their logic is exactly what's being done. Nothing. Well, there you go. And, 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 you know, you and I, it's like, you know, if, if you were grew up in the, as a baby boomer, I'm the late, late, I'm the last baby boomer uh, year of 64. You are uh, 10 years older than me, I said, think so. Yes, not 10 years. <laughs> but well, we're baby no. boomers. And the point, yeah. the point is, is that we actually, you know, I can remember going to the University of Wisconsin engineering school and, you know, being interested in science and engineering. We got to go to trips like that. They have a reactor over there. We got to look at it and look at down in the water cooling cores. And I mean, we got an education on how nuclear reactors worked when I was that age. Seriously, a good one. And we knew that the water that gets contaminated is bad. <laughs> okay, we got that. <laughs> it's yeah, and your tiny little reactor was just a, you know, drop in the bucket compared to Fukushima. Look at this, Steve. 
here's the problem. We're about to show people why this is now, I believe, is a worldwide emergency. It is an emergency, right. And here's the thing. Pay attention to the SV, everybody, because we're going to come back to that when we report the news on the current news on this. But it's called Sieverts, Wayne. Yes, sir. So everybody just keep that in the back of your head. We're going to come back to that word again here in a minute. But, Wayne, what do we got here? This well, I wanted to show the scale. So when we get our chest x-rays, you go in for MRI, you're getting approximately one-tenth of one millionth of a sievert. That's pretty small. Your average exposure in one year is about three millisieverts. So, again. Um, millisieverts. Yeah. Yep, millisieverts. And you can see how it goes all the way down. My friends, one, 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 one thousandth of a sievert. Right. Here's the problem, Steve. They are now getting readings of 530 sieverts an hour. Look what happens if you're exposed to 80 sieverts. You're dead. Instantaneously dead. All right. So with this chart in mind, let's switch over to the story that talks about the number of sieverts that are being released from the you know, current situation. Sure. Uh, let me get out of this, and we will go right over to Wikipedia. So what is a sievert? It's a measurement of dose of radiation. And there are, we have, as you know, RIM, RAM, different classifications. A sievert is a unit of I don't know. Best way I can put it is radiation. Right. It's just a unit of expo. It's a unit of exposure to radi radiation. Right. Precisely. So we go to the radiation levels that we're seeing there right now. And what are we seeing? Well, I mean, here we go. Here's uh, Epic Times. Um, we're seeing 530 sieverts per hour. Let's go over here to the Japan Time News, Steve. They're now reporting this, and I'm sure that their government's not happy about it, but this TEPCO, I tell you what, these executives need to be arrested because the fact that, listen, if you've got a problem, that's okay. We can tell, tell, let, tell the world we got a problem. The Russians did. Yeah, a lot of people helped the Russians contain Chernobyl. But look at this, Steve. They're saying now, this is getting out of the place. So, yeah, I think that we're in a real problem. Yeah, so we wanted to educate everybody on that. But, now, uh, we, uh, you know, if you don't mind, and um, make sure you send these links so we can put them up in the, in the, the, in the comment section for people to go check out on their own and do their own research, um, which we always encourage you to do, to do, by the way, everybody. And what I wanted to do was, you know, like, give everybody a tool that they could look at, that they could go and see what the radiation levels were, at least for the United States. Good. Take it over here. Let's see what we can do because we're going to need to. I mean, seriously. Yeah, we got to learn how to monitor this stuff. Well, the first thing before I let anything go by under the bridge here, um, and can you see the screen? I can. So this is that region of Japan that we're talking about. There it is. And it's a very active region see this wayne 30 day look at that so okay so that's number one number two is the radiation network okay here we go and so basically this is a this is a uh place where you can go look at various monitoring stations and i'm going to walk you through and show you that right now in the united states now the problem with this this tool though Wayne, is it doesn't monitor the ocean levels at all. It's monitoring air and land levels of radiation. Okay. Look at uh, Los Angeles. So Los Angeles is at 50, and what that's showing is it's trending up. Okay. So as you walk across the bottom of here, this is just a standard measuring sta station, one measuring station, and the level is 16 parts per million. And if it goes over 100 parts per million, it turns this chart will actually turn the circle red. So in this example, it shows 126, which is 26 units or 26 parts per million too high. Um, it's a dangerous level and, and it needs to be looked at and needs to be monitored. And that's probably where emergency 
um, local emergency, FEMA, et cetera, et cetera, would get involved when those kind of readings were seen. Okay? I see it. So, and then you can see across where you live, but again, it's, and it updates every five minutes or so or something like that. Now, here's what's interesting, and you can go study this more on your own, but right now there's nowhere to check out right now, Iowa's at 54 and trending up, okay? If you see a red trending up, like it says 27 in this case, with red, it was all red, it means that it's an alarm trend, an alarming trend up. It's like going too fast. Something so how, when I look at this, just for the layman's point, what are some of the causes of background? Is, is this primarily picking up background radiation? It could be cosmic radiation, Wayne. <laughs> well, you do say. Right, right. So yeah, well, see, that's, well, a, that's important to understand that there are many different tools that we show our viewers that where you can get the, the data if you really want it. And Steve, this is a phenomenal tool. Right, and they're actually trying to get it updated to put onto a smartphone, which is cool um, when they do that. So, but anyway, we'll give you the link to this. Now, here's the thing. Now, um, what's interesting is you can also, you're supposed to be able, and they used to have this data, and well, let's just go to Japan. Well, you would think that this would be a hot, wait a minute. There is no monitoring going on. What? Well, at least they're not sharing the data with us on the Korean Peninsula or in Japan. Well, you know why there's no one there over at Fukushima. They're all dead. <laughs> there's nobody. No, <laughs> there's like nobody the guy's going, hey, you go over and you get the measurement. <laughs> Your mama. Oh, no, you get the measurement. You get the <laughs> yeah, measurement. You ask. Yeah. And then you go furthermore into Alaska and Europe. You'd think Hawaii. Well, you, know, you would think uh, that Hawaii would want to... Yeah. But here we go in the Anchorage area in here. This is a 35. That's the only one we got there. And they're not even equalized. So, you know, in the day of where we have Europe's got any, so Europe's got a few monitoring stations. Look at all the nuclear power plants over there. I did not realize that that was, it, it was that proliferated. Well, yeah. And the Soviet Union is still running on a lot By of the way. Um, I have a section that uh, we put together for viewers uh, submitted photographs later. Um, keep Norway in mind. I have a remarkable picture. Okay. Be right with this subject. Okay. Well, anyway, so that's the kind of the radiation report we wanted to give everybody and just update you guys on how to monitor it. I'm sorry we don't have more worldwide locations, guys. It's the only tool we can find. But if you know of other ways to monitor radiation, um, please put it in the comments for our other viewers uh, and our benefit, and we will try to get to those and get those promoted. Okay? Anything else, Wayne? <laughs> no. I thank you, Steve. This is, you know, this is what we're about. Um, you know, to be knowledgeable is to be forearmed. That's the way I look at it. Uh, we'll try to give as much data as we can. And uh, God bless everybody, and have a great afternoon.